Brandon Finney worked at shock trauma where he saw it all, the bullet wounds, the stab wounds. And minutes after leaving work on Sunday night, the same friends he said goodbye to minutes ago were the ones trying to save his life minutes later. Brandon Finney was used as a human shield in a war played out on our streets by gangs. ABC 2 News' Catherine Hawley. There better be an outcry about this murder tonight. Jamie, there definitely is. Loved ones say Brandon Finney was doing everything right, working hard, providing for his girlfriend and one-year-old son, and saving to be buy a car this week. The 25-year-old was an innocent man, gunned down while waiting for a bus on his way home from work Sunday night. Family, friends, and coworkers are angry, but more than anything, they're hurting. Lighting candles, they stood close to where the violence happened Sunday night, clinging to each other and letting the pain pour out. He was doing the right thing, and I'm not trying to hear that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time because he was in the right place. He was coming home from work, trying to take care of his family. 25-year-old Brandon Finney worked as a surgical support tech at Shock Trauma. Sunday night around 11.30, he was waiting for the bus near Saratoga and Paca streets when he was suddenly in the middle of a gang dispute between the Black Gorilla family and the Bloods. According to court documents, BGF members Antoine Morton and Samuel Rogers were in the area looking for Bloods members after an earlier argument. They were targeting 20-year-old Christopher Kampfer, but when the bullet started to fly, Kampfer grabbed Finney and used him as a human shield. All of a sudden, we heard bow, 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 and my brother jumped. He said, duck. They were laying there, and we were like, oh, my God. And I walked down, and the cops started coming from every direction. Camphor and Finney both died after being rushed to shock trauma, a fate loved ones are still coming to terms with. I'm tired of the violence, man. People out here, just, it's just crazy. It just, it, it got to stop somewhere. Like, it really do. Finney had started working at the hospital just a few months ago, but his humor and the way he cared for people really touched his coworkers. It is it's heartbreaking. It really is. I hate to see them like this, my whole trauma family like this. We all gonna really miss them. Finney's one-year-old son will now grow up without a father. A good life, family says, was cut short over ignorance and carelessness. It make no sense my mother got buried her son. It don't make no sense. This world is so messed up. And he ain't just hurt it. He ain't just hurt it. Morton and Rogers were arrested this afternoon. They're behind bars tonight and both face a long list of charges, including murder, assault, and witness intimidation. Catherine Hawley, ABC2 News. Baltimore City police say they've made an arrest in a double shooting that happened late Sunday night near Lexington Market. This was in the 400 block of West Saratoga Street. Two men were killed and one of them was a surgical support technician at Shock Trauma. 11 News reporter Lowell Melzer is live outside of city police headquarters with the latest for us. Lowell. Yeah, Kate, police tell us that 25-year-old Brendan Frazier was simply caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, an innocent bystander. They have arrested 20, excuse me, 25-year-old Antoine Morton and 28-year-old Samuel Rogers, members of the Black Gorilla family. Their target, we are told, was 20-year-old Christopher Kampfer, who police say used Finney as a human shield as he was being shot at. Tierra Finney fights back tears as she thinks about her brother Brandon Finney and how bright his future was looking. About three months ago, he began working as a surgical support technician at Shock Trauma and was now going to be able to provide for his growing family. He just wanted to provide a, a better life for his uh, son. Uh, we come from a good family. He, uh, he's a good person. He has a good heart. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> Police say Sunday night, just before 11.30, Finney was waiting for a bus at the corner of Saratoga and Paca Streets near the hospital. Sitting next to him was 20-year-old Christopher Campfor. According to charging documents, Campfor was a member of the Bloods gang. All of a sudden, the documents say 25-year-old Antoine Morton and 28-year-old Samuel Rogers, members of the Black Gorilla family gang, came up and opened fire on Camp 4. Apparently, there was some sort of dispute earlier in the evening. The documents say Camp 4 grabbed Finney and used him as a human shield. Both were shot multiple times and died. Nobody deserves to have their life taken, but at this, his life was definitely cut short. 
Several witnesses at the scene gave police good descriptions of the suspects, who were also identified by a nearby police camera. One witness in particular knew who the suspects were and identified them in a lineup. Both Morton and Rogers, after being arrested, denied any role in the shooting. Finney's shock trauma family, shocked by the news, released the following statement, saying, Brandon played an important role in helping many members of our community in their greatest time of need. We honor his memory by supporting each other and his family as we mourn this extraordinary loss. A loss indeed, one his family will have a hard time getting over. He doesn't really catch the bus uh, that often, but it's uh, so sad because he uh, wanted to purchase his uh, first car Thursday. Now, both Morton and Rogers are facing a laundry list of charges, including first and second degree murder and first and second degree assault. They are currently being held without bond. We're live outside of Baltimore City Police Headquarters tonight. I'm Lowell Melser, WBAL, TV 11 News. Two Baltimore men are now charged with a very violent attack at a West Baltimore bus stop. Jeff Abel live at Shock Trauma, where one of the victims is being remembered at this hour. Jeff. You know, Brandon Fenney had just started working as a surgery technician here about a month ago. But suddenly, Sunday night, the man who had begun helping save lives here found himself fighting for his own life. At the bus stop where Brandon Finney lost his life, his friends gathered tonight to remember his life. He was one of the good guys, definitely. Yeah, he was a, he was a great father. That was cut short, but... <sighs> Brandon Finney lost his life while waiting for the bus here at Saratoga and Paca Street Sunday night. He was heading home after ending his workday at shock trauma, but he didn't get far. Within minutes, police say two gunmen opened fire on the bus stop. One of the bullets hit Finney, who was suddenly being raced right back to shock trauma, this time as a victim. Just 15 minutes after work, he lost his life. Police believe two gang members are responsible for the shooting. They're charging Antoine Morton and Samuel Rogers with murder. Detectives say another man, Christopher Campor, was their intended victim. Finney, they believe, was being used as a human shield when he took a bullet in his side. Both men lost their lives. They opened up in public and started shooting, so it was just, you know, it's basically open season, so <sighs> everybody else was blessed to walk out alive. At the family's home today, Finney's sister was gratified by the arrest. I'm, I'm happy. God has done his job. The police department have done their job. So justice will be served. Shot trauma, we miss you, baby. Tonight, friends were mourning the death of a friend who leaves a 15-month-old son behind. His life is, it was cut short, but we, we still have his son, so it's a beautiful thing. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Well, police say both, victim, both suspects in this case were members of the Black Gorilla family gang, and the other victim in the case was a member of a rival gang. At Shock Trauma, Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. The death of an innocent young father caught in gang crossfire at a bus stop in Baltimore is sending shockwaves to the community. But it is far from the only incident. A report shows gang activity is growing statewide. WJZ investigator Mike Halgren is live and digging into the problem. Mike? Denise, it's not just a Baltimore issue. There has been gang activity reported in Western Maryland, the Eastern Shore, places like Howard County, Harford County. But this latest crime here is truly shocking, and it has shined a spotlight on gangs. Baltimore City alone has an estimated 170 gangs, more than 1,000 members, many lured in when they're just little boys. They uh, typically go down to about eight years old. It's a bad problem. I mean, we have uh, a lot of the shootings and or homicides that you hear about in the news are, are gang related. At a bus stop on busy Saratoga Street downtown, police say Brandon Finney, a shock trauma technician and father of a 15 month old, got used as a human shield Sunday when two members of the BGF gang had a shootout with a rival blood. How is the family doing? How do you heal from something like this? Um, you just you stay positive. 
We're moving forward. Uh, we're going to celebrate his life. Finney's uh, family is not alone in their pain. Not. Almost a decade ago, cab driver and father of nine, Daryl Guess, was murdered in a blood gang initiation in Harford County. While laws have been strengthened at the state house and police have specialized units, they haven't wiped out the problem and its root, the illegal drug trade. We actually know who these guys are who are actually involved in these gang in this gang leadership. A detailed report by the state of Maryland last year lists 10 gangs as big problems statewide and says gang activity is only increasing. The uh, underground economy fuels the gangs and so there's a demand side for drugs. If you're caught up in the crossfire anywhere at any time, it's very concerning. What do you think about those who don't care about human life who would do something like this? It's not, it's not for me to say, it's for God. And both suspects in Mr. Finney's killing appeared in court today. They're being held without bond. Denise? All right, thank you very much, Mike. Now, the Finney family is trying to raise money for Brandon's funeral. If you would like to help, you can log on to cbsbaltimore.com. Click on this story to find out how you can donate.